So what's in store for computer science in the next 25 years? Well, let me state some obvious trends. We will continue to advance in the foundations of our field by tackling outstanding open problems and new ones we have yet to pose. We will continue to produce new technologies that we didn't even know we wanted or needed. And our technologies will continue to transform other disciplines, expediting advances in those fields. And our technologies will continue to disrupt entire sectors, from agriculture to automotive, from journalism to law. And computer scientists will continue to team up with other scientists and engineers to address societal grand challenges such as energy and education and healthcare. What do I see different in the coming 25 years from the past 25? I believe our focus will not be inward, but outward. I believe our focus will not just be on ourselves, but on others. We will explore how computer science and our technology can better humanity. The original dreams of you know, computers that help you get things done, that understand the value of your time, that understand the text that you're sending, uh, you know, we can go back to the very beginning and say that there's still work to be done on that first thing. I mean, you as a user today are still having to take all the events, all the communication activities, and you have a model of what you're trying to get done. That model does not exist in, in the software. Uh, and so knowing, okay, I'm at work, I have 10 minutes free, which thing, which new news thing, uh, Instagram thing, Twitter thing, email thing is worthwhile to you and how do you assist the person dealing with that. That kind of what I sometimes call alter ego that uh, has a model of intentionality similar to what you have, including being able to read things, you know, we haven't done that. And so it's, uh, whether it's navigating data, helping people make sense of things, using their time well, the opportunity for software to make us more effective uh, is still pretty phenomenal. And it is exciting, the speed of progress uh, coming out of research that a lot of the people here are doing, the speech, the image recognition, the, the text processing systems, we are making more progress now per year than ever, I'd say, in the last 25 years. There's an unpredictable element to what we do, sometimes it almost feels like there can be a tipping point where after many years, maybe a decade or more of work, that there's suddenly enough knowledge that's built up in our community to uh, enable and allow tremendous practical progress to be seen. And so this is this quality that research is a long game. And as I look ahead over the next 25 years, despite the fact that there are tremendous pressures now on us as a research community to create results faster and more plentifully than ever before, there's no sign at all that this unpredictable nature, the idea that research being a long game, there's no evidence at all uh, that I see that this is going to change. And so for us, this is going to kind of create a challenge. It creates a challenge because at least in today's world, in fact, now more than ever, if we look at the tech industry, all of the best CEOs are desperate for innovation. They're desperate for the next big thing. And where are they looking? They are looking at us, at researchers, at the research community. Because there is a fundamental belief in today's technology industry that research is the foundation, is the fuel, provides the spark for innovations. That may or may not be right. I happen to believe it's correct. Um, but what is important right now is that the massive investments in kind of PhD level thought and research uh, are, are fueled by that belief. And that imposes a kind of pressure on all of us. And 
it's important for all of us working together as a community to understand uh, that there's this unpredictable nature and to ensure that people are making smart decisions. So we always wanted to get to the scale where we could do our own research and that we were both giving back to the field and seeing where the field was going by having top, top researchers. And corporate research groups, they're mostly unique in that they're seeing needs of the market and connecting up to products that really are going to get shipped. I don't see a way to decouple the future of MSR from the success of Microsoft. Uh, that is, if Microsoft is successful 10 years from now, 20 years from now, 30 years from now, uh, then I think Microsoft research will, will do extremely well. There are things that uh, are also timeless in terms of general research themes. Reliability, engineering process, security, privacy, those ideas are bound, if anything, to become even more relevant over the next 25 years, especially as the number of kind of protected enclaves in the world, corporate networks and the like, starts to decrease, and the number of objects that are just out in open networks starts to increase, especially with developments like the Internet of Things. And those ideas are bound to drive tremendously difficult research problems and fascinating ones for all of us. Uh, machine intelligence, artificial intelligence, autonomy, autonomous systems. I'm reminded of the mid-1400s when Gutenberg printed the first major book, the Gutenberg Bible, on the first printing press made from mass-produced movable type. At that time, around 1452, there were an estimated 30,000 books in all of Europe. In less than 50 years after the printing of the Gutenberg Bible, there were an estimated 12 million books in Europe. It was really a Moore's Law of its time. And the incredible democratization of access to knowledge was something that had the potential to lift up the entire world. Only 100 years after that, new art forms like the novel emerged. But at the same time, the printing press was incredibly disruptive. There were powerful forces, such as the churches of the day, that tried to own and control this technology. Parents, just in that 50-year time frame, their conception of their obligations to their children, of what it means to be educated, what it takes to survive and thrive in our societies, suddenly involved this incredibly challenging skill, namely knowing how to read and write. And the displacements that were created by then were incredibly difficult and sometimes brutal for societies of the time. What we do today as researchers is every bit as transformational and empowering and potentially challenging and disruptive as that time, but now it's at internet speeds. And so what I find so important for what we are all doing today, yes, I, I'm a company man, I want Microsoft to be successful. Yes, I want the tech industry to be successful. I want all of us to be successful, but what is really important about what we are doing is creating this technology, this incredible democratizing and empowering force, but at the same time doing it in a way that is also thoughtful about the potential disruptions and dislocations in our society.